Hi, I'm Jim from Easy Tankless, and today I'm going to talk about NPT pipe thread, the differences between threads. Today we will be using a Easy Ultra model in our demonstration. Keep in mind when you have dissimilar metals in your plumbing, in addition to a standard union, there exists dielectric unions which are used to separate dissimilar metals such as copper and galvanized steel. To avoid the damaging effects of galvanic corrosion, when two dissimilar metals are placed in an electrically conductive solution, even tap water is conductive, they will form a battery and generate a voltage by electrolysis. When the two metals are in contact with each other, the current from one metal to the other will cause a movement of ions from one to the other, dissolving one metal and depositing it on the other. A dielectric union breaks the electric current with a plastic liner between two halves of the union, thus limiting galvanic corrosion. For more information about galvanic corrosion, you may search the internet or contact a local plumbing professional. A dielectric union does provide a measure of protection when using galvanized pipe. However, laboratory tests show that a simple 3 inch dielectric nipple further reduces current flow by 85% over the use of simply the dielectric union alone. So the next time you install a water heater, also install a dielectric nipple in addition to a dielectric union. Buy them at your plumbing supply store. So if you were wanting to put a piece like this iron pipe connect it or say you're wanting to attach a service valve kit do one of these that's referred to as a bushing or a reducer this is your standard pipe thread tapered and you can put the service valve set directly on here you would use sealant tape or paste be careful on your intake side because you don't want that material that sealant or that paste or tape going into the intake track it can obstruct the intake water flow sensor if you compare a tapered adapter you can see here that the top surface is just normal if you look at this one it's machined flat Okay, that is to accept another piece that also would have a gasket. Like you have a gasket, a rubber one in here. Well, this fitting on the heater will accept this type with a rubber gasket. Or it will accept iron pipe. You can just thread it right on there. And of course, again, sealant or paste as it tightens up. Be careful not to over tighten this and fracture your heater. Okay, so if we're going to use the adapter piece, it seals with the rubber. It will bolt directly to one of these. These are common water heater parts. It has a gasket inside and it goes right on there. So that machined surface is designed for a second piece to attach that has a sealing washer. Okay, so you can go to copper here is a piece of copper the same thing uses a gasket and it goes right on there there we have it that's another way you can do it now this copper piece that i have here is an adapter to pex Visualize that you were just going into your copper system if you have half inch copper line and this being larger you would just Cut this PEX end off for example and use a sweat joint to a reducer or Or whatever Okay, so say we're going to go to iron pipe In three-quarter What you have to get is these I purchased at Menards. This is Watts brand part number a870 This is a three-quarter MIP by half-inch FIP. So here we have this is tapered threads, 
it will go right into your valve set. It will go right into your iron pipe. Okay. And it goes right on our heater. Again, this is from Menards, I'm sure Lowe's, wherever. So then if you want to go directly to PEX, here we have a PEX adapter. And this piece inside here has a nylon sealing ring that will seal against the machine surface of our part. Okay, there's your PEX connection. Another way to do that. So again, if you need to go to tapered threads, this at Menards is an A870 under the Watts brand name. Into iron pipe, then into garden hose. And that's what this is. This is a garden hose here. See there? This is a garden hose fitting. If you are going to run your heater off of garden hoses, say at a campsite or whatever, for example, you can use something like this. This is garden hose here, and half, and it can go, you know, right on here. And I like these because you can have the garden hose running from your main spigot, say at a campsite, it might be quite a great distance from where you're actually camped. So you can leave it turned on there and then turn off your flow here. So then your heater will shut down. Then you can have uh, exit hot being red. So you can have this on the other side of the heater going out for filling your campsite uh, bucket for washing dishes or for your shower or, or whatever. Um, the modifications and combinations are infinite. So this would be garden hose type setup. Uh, controlling water flow coming in and then of course to be able to turn it on and turn it off on the hot side. Thank you for watching our video. 